Today, I'm gonna be matching up Gun Freaks from Hunter x Hunter against Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia in an all-out battle to decide who is the stronger child prodigy. I mean, look at them. They both have green hair, big smiles, and city-destroying punches. They are two characters that I just needed to match up because in my opinion, they're absolutely underrated shonen powerhouses that generally fly under the radar in what-if battles. But I'm pretty convinced that when they're facing off, we're gonna get an epic, fun and incredibly close matchup. So over the course of three rounds, I'm gonna be comparing them at various points in their series and eventually figure out which kid punches the hardest at recess. Starting with round one, Hunter Exam Gun and Sports Festival Midoriya. This is basically both of them right after their first major set of arcs, so it's pretty much the perfect starting place in my mind. A place where they're clearly both set up to become powerful, but not quite broken yet. Now when it comes to raw power, both of these kids hit heart and I mean, really, really hard. At the Soldic Mansion, we see that Gon is capable of moving four tons without any extra power boost from any men. He's also capable of injuring Hanzo, the strongest fighter in the Hunter exams, someone even stronger than Kilua, a trained assassin. We also see Gon completely destroy a stone thick stone pillar in a single punch during his standoff with Kanari at the Zaldic Manor as well. And Gon is also a master of the fishing rod able to manipulate it completely at will, extending his reach and effective range by several meters. Now, I don't think that this is gonna be too relevant in this specific matchup, but if Midoriya is looking to go big bass fishing after the battle, I'm pretty certain that Gon is gonna clearly win that one. And while all of that is truly impressive, don't count Deku out just yet. Thanks to his training and the insanely broken quirk one for all, he's able to destroy massive robots and level entire buildings with a single punch. I also crunched the numbers on this a bit, and based on my <coughs> expert level math skills and extensive research, aka a few really well done Google searches, I managed to calculate his feats in his battle with Todoroki. And I found out that the UA Sports Festival Arena is roughly 300 meters tall. Now, Todoroki is actually capable of making ice walls that scale to that same height in his battle with Midoriya, and we do see Deku with one flick of a finger destroy these massive 300 100 meter tall ice walls. Not only that, he keeps doing it time and time again until all of his little fingers are completely busted. So yeah, I think it's time now that I mention what I believe is actually gonna be the biggest factor in this entire fight, the backlash of Midoriya's raw power. And it's actually one of my favorite parts of his character design early on. I mean, he has this crazy broken power, but needs to be very strategic in how he uses it because he isn't fully trained physically for it yet. And every time that Midoriya taps into one for all, with only a few exceptions, he ends up breaking fingers, arms, or hands. And yet somehow he keeps immense focus despite all of this pain and even breaks some of his fingers a second time. And so I think that if a matchup lasts long enough, this could actually be his downfall, but his explosive power makes him really strong in the short term. But I'll come back to how that's gonna affect him in just a second. For now, I wanna talk about speed and stamina, something that these kids are really gonna need. And since we sadly don't have their standard middle school running test scores, I had to measure these stats another way. Luckily though, I remembered that both the Hunter exam and the sports festival have both stamina categories and for the purpose of this video, the first trial of the exam and the obstacle course in the first round of the festival are perfect for comparing these two, I think. Miss Midnight here, my personal vote for the top five hottest teachers in anime, by the way, confirms that the race is a four kilometer race. And unfortunately, it's pretty clear that Midoriya is not fast enough to win that very race, so he resorts to some very smart, quick thinking to win instead. And we also know for a fact that he can do a 50 meter dash in seven seconds when he enters UA a pretty average score, I'll say. But without shattering his legs, he's not very fast, which normally isn't really a problem for Midoriya because his strongest power is 
his brain because it's really this part of Midoriya, the whole obsessive teenager with a knack for memorizing patterns, implementing on the fly strategies and critical thinking skills that really make me think that he has a real fighting chance in this matchup. This early version is absolutely a brains over brawn kind of guy which is great against Gon, a child with absolutely no formal education and a pretty straightforward fighting style. And in terms of stamina and durability, Midoriya is also pretty good. He's able to complete All Might's beach training without a quirk and constantly takes heavy hits from the likes of Todoroki and Bakugo while fighting them as well. And since I just remembered, he actually has also broken limbs while he does this. And to understand just how much willpower and stamina that actually takes, I decided to punch my wall as hard as I possibly could breaking my hands. I can confirm that Midoriya does in fact have that dog in him because my hand is ruined and in my professional opinion, I do not think that most people could keep doing what he does with this level of injury. Now, unfortunately for Midoriya, Gon is a freak of nature, no pun intended. And there's really parts of me that kind of struggle to see how Midoriya is gonna hold his own against this hunter. Gon easily runs over 80 kilometers during his hunter exam, finishing the race with a giant smile on his face and not a drop of sweat. When I run, and I actually run like two or three times a week, I end up throwing up after about like 10 to 15 kilometers. So needless to say, you're absolutely killing it gone. And you're also incredibly fast according to both Kurapika and Chairman Netero. In fact, early Gon forces Chairman Netero to use both hands in his little trial, a full speed game of keep away that lasts for over three hours. I guess sometimes you just have to run head first into your problems until you win, even if your opponent is just way smarter than you. No, literally, a headbutt is actually how Gon pushes Nitero to use both his arms and proves that sometimes bronze can be greater than brains. Quick side note here, some may think that this is a clever strategy, but I think it's Gon being pretty dumb and Nitero being cautious to not hurt the kid whose sole focus is breaking his ribcage, regardless of if he crushes his own skull in the process. But that's just me. So, with that being said, surely he'll be able to handle Midoriya then, right? I actually think it's gonna be close based on everything that I've laid out, so let's find out in their first matchup. Our first round here is set up to be a brutal battle of just endurance. Midoriya is definitely way stronger in my mind, but Gon's other stats are truly nuts in comparison. So the question is, can Midoriya take down Gon fast enough, or will this little hillybilly here prove to be too much for the future? your number one hero. Let's find out. Round one. Fight. Midoriya is on his way to the train station so that he can make it to school when he comes across Gon Freaks, who seems to be somewhat lost. When he goes up to offer him directions to school, Gon surprises him by telling him, School is for nerds. I'm trying to find Heaven's Arena. And well, of course, Midoriya can't let that one slide. A child like him needs to go to school, so he grabs his arm and decides to bring him to class. Unfortunately, Gon doesn't really like that too much and pushes him away. If you want me to go to school, you'll have to drag me there. And so inevitably, their match begins. Midoriya leaps in trying to read which way Gon will go, but his speed is just too much. He rushes around the little train station, pushing Midoriya around. And eventually he just unleashes a massive punch into the subscribe button? Oh, well now on top of bullying Midoriya, Gon gets access to the wonderful content here on Tanuki Tales. Maybe you can get that too. Hmm. Anyways, back to Midoriya who's getting harassed by a middle schooler right now. And eventually he gets his bearings and remembers his matches against Bakugo. He's able to read Gon's next move and grabs his arm. Midoriya activates his quirk and then slams Gon into the ground, shattering the pavement and breaking his own arm in the process. A bit overkill maybe, but surely this kid is now out for the count, right? Wrong. Gon shakes his head and just gets up. In his eyes, they are just getting started here. He then lays a quick combo of attacks into Midoriya's stomach. Midoriya, with one last attempt, claps his hand and tries to blast Gon into the wall at the cost of breaking his own wrists. And Gon is actually launched back, shattering three walls in the process. The train station is absolutely Absolutely ruined and their match is complete. From the rubble, Gon Freaks gets up and hops on the train, leaving a broken and defeated Midoriya on the ground. And to make things even worse, he then turns around and says, 
I didn't even need to use my fishing rod. A quote that is going to haunt Midoriya until their next match because he knows now that that next matchup is gonna feature that fishing rod and he'll need a very special ability to combat it. And honestly, I think that the very sad truth of round number one is that with his huge body breaking limitation, less fighting experience and generally overall weaker base stats, Midoriya didn't really have a chance here. If Gon was less durable, Midoriya definitely definitely could have won this match, I think. I mean, he has the raw power to one-shot a lot of characters, and really, if it was Leorio or even Kurapika, I think that Midoriya could win in one decisive blow. But I really hope that you agree that with Gon's durability, endurance, and speed being just so high level, I just can't quite see this round going any differently. Even if he did manage to land a full power smash and break Gon's ribs, arm or legs, Seiko would have the same damage, if not even greater, dealt back to him. And we have seen Gon get up and be able to fight after injuries like that during his match with, for instance, Hanzo, unlike Midoriya, who is practically stuck in place after he breaks something. And so to really make things a little bit more interesting now, I have made sure that the next round is a completely different story. By closing the gap in their power, this round should give both of them a proper fighting chance now. And so next we're gonna jump forward in time and have Greed Island Gone battle 15% full Cal Midoriya working with the Endeavor Agency. Now to me, this is a moment where both of them seem to lose most of their weaknesses and unlock a lot of their powers. And while I considered for a moment matching UA Festival Midoriya up against Gone, I think he needs access to some of his extra powers to really close the gap properly. But before I touch on those, let's start off with Gon here. At this point in the story, he has gained access to Nen and his Hatsu, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Gon's Nen buffs and physical training are absolutely massive boosts in power, the perfect amount, I think, for this matchup. He's now unlocked enhanced durability, incredibly fast reaction times, and of course, brutal raw power. He is capable of throwing dodgeballs with the strength of cannonballs, tank explosions from Genthru and is able to dodge Razor's supersonic dodgeball throws as well. And let me be clear here, I think this is a completely underestimated feat because we often combine these powers with Kilua and Hisoka's help, but both of them need Gon to dish out the final blow, so I'm throwing it in here as a really good showcase of him taking out Razor, a man with power respected by his father Ging, a Zodiac, and one of the all-time strongest characters in the Hunter x Hunter world. But of course, the strongest ability that Gon actually gains in this round is access to rock, paper, and scissors, also known as the Jajang Ken. And if you're not familiar with Hunter x Hunter, no, I'm not talking about arts and crafts or playground games here. I'm actually talking about Gon's Nen abilities that can fire off sharp energy blades capable of cutting down waves of trees and rocks, punches capable of leveling boulders, and projectiles capable of damaging the incredibly durable Knucklebine as well. And when hearing that name, at first it may not seem like a crazy feat, but then I remembered that this dude throws hands with Chimera ends and even steps up to the royal guards itself. He's really beefy and Gon taking him out with such small windows to improve shows just how much he can grow in a short period of time. Interestingly enough, Gon here is also way smarter as we see that he really starts to implement strategy thanks to his training with Kilua and Biski. He uses paper for projectile attacks to set up for pincier attacks with his devastating rock punch and also sets up pitfalls and uses his unique abilities like the energy blade scissors to manipulate his surroundings. Not to mention, he still has that very super rad looking fishing rod as well. Now, Gon was always a very good fighter, I think, with mastery of his body, but he really, really steps it up by the end of Greed Island. Early Gon is clever, but I don't think we really see him use that big old brain of his until this point in the series. That's why, to me, he's now the perfect version for round number two. Which, to me, means, Deko, you will really need to pull out all of the stops to handle this little nightmare here. Because to counter all of this, he's definitely putting everything in this next round because Izuku Midoriya completely evolved into your average neighborhood Deku, capable of defeating professional heroes and supervillains. By the time he's joined Endeavor's agency, young Midoriya has held his own and defeated the supervillain Stain, 
muscular overhaul and the gentle criminal. All thanks to his mastery of the technique, full cowling, an ability that lets him infuse his entire body with one for all's energy at various levels. At 5%, he can keep up with the hero killer Stain and muscular, defeating the latter with his ultimate power, a 1 million percent Detroit smash. Which I will say, I do think that name is a little bit misleading as I'm operating under the assumption that it's an adrenaline boosted 100% smash, probably closer to the 150% range. It may be more, even closer to 200 on the high end, but I'm pretty certain it's nowhere near the 1 million that Deku gaslights himself into thinking it is. But hey, its power is still, of course, absolutely insane, because as we see, 100% smashes in this form are capable of just deleting muscular and overhaul with ease. You might as well call him One Punch Man at this point, because when he taps into 100% of his power, even though it breaks his body still, he can one-hit KO pretty much most opponents. This version of Midoriya is also crazy fast now, outdoing Bakugo, Ida, and even the pro hero Gran Torino, characters that have, you know, speed quirks. And by this point, I think that he's become one of the fastest characters in the series, only probably losing to Hawks, Endeavor, and maybe Edshot, I think. But normal power and speed boosts aren't all that Midoriya gets here, of course, as he also gains access to a bunch of hero gear, multiple fighting styles, and yes, even two new quirks. With shoot style, he can now kick massive stone spikes or heavy iron balls at enemies. He also copies Bakugo's fighting style, moving around the battlefield with expert level speed and precision. And on top of all that, he also gains access to the truly sick power of the Air Force. Uh, uh oh no. No, not these Air Forces, Air Force, the refined version of his flicking power that used to destroy his hands. Now with special gauntlets and gloves, Deku can actually channel smaller percentages of power into pressurized air, launching opponents and even boosting his speed when he uses it to move around. Something that coincidentally works incredibly well with his two other quirks, Black Whip and Float. Really long story short here, One For All basically manifests multiple quirks inside of Deku. As I said earlier, I think that he really needs those powers in order to properly match up against Greed Island Gone since they push him into the realm of truly powerful and not just, you know, kind of average in his own universe. So in this round, he can now also use Black Whip, energy tendrils that kind of work a lot like Spider-Man's webs, I guess, giving Deku the ability to move around even faster by swinging and pulling on these ropes. They can even restrict anime movements or grab onto rubble and be used as makeshift ball and chain. And he also uses Float, a quirk that shockingly, who knew, lets him float. And so with Air Force, Float, and Black Whip, Deku can fight safely in the sky and rush down opponents from every single possible angle. So the real question is, can he actually defeat Gon with all of these broken new powers? Or will the Nen boosted Demon Child crush the young hero a second time? It is now time for round number two to begin. Round two. Fight. It's been now over a year since Izuku Midoriya was manhandled by a child in a train station and he has been training non-stop to bring him to class once and for all. He has used all of his resources to track this child down into a grocery store parking lot and even did the unthinkable and called in sick from class. And arriving, he sees his green-haired rival, Gone Freaks, eating a mango. Stop wasting your potential and train with me! Become a hero! Midoriya yells out as he leaps into the sky, unleashing a black whip at Gon. But Gon saw this coming with his men and quickly throughout his fishing line, clashing with the black whip and securing his fruit. <laughs> it's been a while. Let's do this! Gon yells as he runs towards Midoriya, throwing out blasts of paper to bring him closer to the ground. The two clash as Midoriya uses Air Force to bounce around the parking lot and counter the paper. But Gon is really fast. He's closed the gap and sliced off his gauntlets. Without access to refined Air Force, this battle is a lot harder. But to do this, Gon got in way too close and multiple black whips stretched out to grab his legs now. He quickly cuts them off, but he's now left wide open in the air. Midoriya screams out, Detroit, 
Smash! And lays a heavy punch into Gon, and then another one, and another one. With full cowling, he now unleashes a flurry of punches and kicks into the small child, launching him into a grocery cart. He then quickly ties him up with the Black Whips and drags him off to UA, where he intends to enroll him for their summer courses. Meaning that, yeah, round two is finished, and the winner, I think, would be Izuku Midoriya. That's right. Even with all of his incredible new powers, I actually don't think that Gon's strength feats quite hold up here. They've been pretty quickly outscaled, I think, by the rapid increases that Midoriya had. Gon can destroy boulders and defeat powerful opponents, but Midoriya's power at this point levels entire buildings. No, entire city blocks if he throws caution to the wind. But let's be real, if it was just power, Gon could probably still take the win, and that's why I had to match up Midoriya with Black Whip and Float. Because I don't want to underplay that Gon's Nen is really powerful and would really help him outscale Midoriya without extra powers if I hadn't given it to him. But Gon's regular man abilities aren't that powerful compared to Deku. I mean, it may help him read the flow of aura and react quickly, but based on just how fast Midoriya's reaction time is at this point, I believe that they're operating on a similar level, and I'm basing this on the fact that Ida, Bakugo, and Overhaul's abilities move incredibly fast, shattering the sound barrier, and Midoriya is still faster than all of them. But then again, if you make the argument that Bakugo actually won their fight, then Gon may have faster speed feeds based on Razor's cannonball throws, I guess. Luckily though, if you're not happy with this result, it's not over yet. We have another round, and let me tell you, it's a true battle of demons. I'm talking full power adult Gon versus 120% Midoriya, because I wanted to really match them up at the strongest possible form that we've seen them in either of their stories to fully decide which little green man is the most powerful. And this time I'll go over Midoriya first, since he was way more belts and whistles, and I'm pretty sure that he's gonna need all of them against a dulled, long-haired Gon. So, Midoriya, at the end of the series, he's actually only capable of accessing 45% of One For All's true power at any given time. But that's actually okay, because his quirks Fajin and Gear Shift help him go even further beyond plus ultra. And really, I think that these two abilities make or break this fight because without them, Midoriya probably really struggles to keep up with adult god's powers, let's be real here. So, how do they actually work? Well, Fajin for one stores a power in his limbs based on repetitive motion. So, if he continually squats up and down, all of those squats are actually stored into one super massive release of power when he actually jumps. The same works if he winds up a bunch of punches with one arm, ultimately exploding into a massive 120% fall or fake all for one Detroit Smash. Now, Gear Shift is just a power that defies physics, allowing Deku to shift the speed and velocity of anything that he can get his hands on, including, coincidentally, himself. Now, he uses it to massively boost how fast he's hitting targets and moving, thus completely boosting the power of the strikes as well. However, we do know that thanks to his fight with Shigaraki, he can kill his momentum at will without losing any of the power that would come with the speed. Which basically just means that Midoriya can go super fast to build up a lot of power and then decide to stop moving all of a sudden altogether to fake out his opponent and then continue you in faster gear to destroy his enemy completely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I personally think that the show kind of makes it clear that the most devastating combination in his arsenal occurs when he's using both of these moves alongside the Black Whip to create the Detroit Smash Quintuple, a smash whose power is at 5 hundred percent of his maximum outputs. And somehow I'm still not sure if this power would be enough to actually defeat Adult Gon, so in case he does need to use his other tricky quirks, let me quickly break them down for you as well. First, Smokescreen is an ability that lets him unleash a massive wave of fog to basically blind his opponents, but with his advanced Nen, Gon should be able to see right through this. I kind of thought that it would be useful, and then I remembered Gyo, the ability to concentrate Nen into eyeballs, and that just completely undoes the usefulness of this specific power, I think. So instead, Danger Sense is going to really be 
something that Midoriya needs. It's kind of a precognitive power that tells Midoriya if a dangerous attack is coming and what direction it's coming from. Also, let me say, you're really going all in on the Spider-Man vibe with a Spidey sense and web shot. I mean, I guess you, you like that, Deku. Well, let's see if that's gonna be enough compared to your rival here. How do I put this? Adult Gon is a nearly unstoppable force of nature created by Gon's unrelenting willpower and dedication to accomplishing one single goal. In this case, he really needs to defeat Neferpitu and avenge his master and friend Kite, so he makes a Nen Pact, a rule in Hunter x Hunter similar to Binding Vows in JJK, where the user can basically give up or create restraints on an ability to drastically boost its power. Gon though, he kind of took this one a little bit to the extreme. It's all pretty clear when he says, I don't care if this is my end, so I will use everything. To put it simply, Gon gives up his future and in exchange condenses all of his own life force and future Nen growth, power and skill to gain some fabulous looking hair that erupts into the sky, blocking out the sun and also gains a form designed to murder Neferpito. In their words, it is a power that rivals even the Ant King Miruem and exceeds Chairman Netaro, who is the strongest hunter in the world. And in fact, those two are going to be how we're gonna try and scale this adult version of Gon, since he's only on screen for a very short time in the story. In their battle against each other, the Chairman and Ant King move at near light speed, scaling above Neferpito and Godspeed Kiyo and have power capable of destroying entire fortresses in a single blow. A single punch from Miriam shook the entire ant nest moments after he was born and took thousands of full power attacks from Netero without showing real signs of damage. The only thing capable of killing Miruem was a poor man's rose, which is basically a miniature nuke. And to bring this back, this is the level of power that Pito scales adult Gon to. Now, from Gon himself, we see him one shot the royal guard member Pitol with a single kick and then destroy a massive section of the forest around them as he continues to unleash Jajankens into their corpse. So this is what you're up against Midoriya, can you actually handle that? Round three, fight. Now it's time for the third round. So. Please, in the audience, place your bets in the comments below. No cheating. It's Adult Gon or 120% Midoriya. Who do you think wins? Well, Gon is sick and tired of school. He can't handle it anymore, and it's all that stupid green-haired teenager's fault. He charges up a rock, shattering the walls and shaking the grounds of UA Academy, and Midoriya's danger senses kick in, and he rushes to the classroom. All of the other students have been blown into the walls, knocked unconscious at the raw power of Gon. I don't care anymore. I'm going to destroy you at all costs, Deku. I will not do math! And suddenly, Gon grows to the truly massive size of a regular man. Wind spirals around him, destroying the entire school. His body grows as his bones crack and his skin seems to shred, becoming a literal demon covered in pure fear and terror. Midoriya's danger sense explodes, but he doesn't get a direction because the threat of Gon Freaks is just everywhere. Gon charges up his fist at his side, reciting the chant for his rock, paper, scissors. Show me rock. Midoriya quickly activates his full cowling. Using Fajin and gear shift, he boosts up his power, repeatedly preparing one single punch. He prepares his final attack and whispers, 120%! Detroit! Meaning that, yeah, this battle is going to be decided in one final big punch. The two square off, their eyes locked, the world around them fades, and the only thing each of them can do is charge their final attack. Their timing is, of course, perfect in sync, and it's almost beautiful. Full destructive power combined into one massive gigaton blow. Smash! A massive explosion destroys all of UA High School, killing everyone inside and causing a magnitude 9 earthquake. Dust, debris and smoke erupt as if a volcano had just erupted. However, at the end, only one fighter remains. Crawling out of the shattered school rubble, a green-haired boy stands up. With one arm missing and no smile on his face, Izuku Midoriya stands tall. <sighs> I'm sorry. I failed you, Gon. 
Yeah, those two warriors gave it their all and only the ungodly power of one for all was capable of defeating an adult level gone freaks, I think. I would argue that Midoriya's single punch was a move capable of doing just enough damage to take out Gon at the cost of his own arm and his hero's pride, that is. It may come as a surprise to some of you, but adult Gon, I think, isn't actually that busted. Like. He's terrifying and the anime and manga do a great job hyping him up, but the poor man's rose that he scaled to, it's smaller than All For One, Shigaraki, or even Giganto Makia's destructive yields. Characters who can level slightly smaller or even similar areas fairly casually. If Gon scaled to post poor man's rose Meruem, then maybe this fight turns out a lot differently. I mean, that version is capable of destroying mountains with a flick of his wrist, but the characters that adult Gon scales to, pre-rose Meruem, Netero, or even Zeno Zoldic, they just don't have the same city destroying powers of some of the My Hero characters. But in a strange way, Gon did win part of this matchup. You did it kid, you got out of school. But I do wonder, where does your rock scale against other insane ultimate abilities in anime? And of course, what about Deku's smash? Is it stronger than Saitama's serious punch or Luffy's Byron gun? Well, to find that out, you need to watch this list breaking down the strongest ultimate moves in anime manga. So you can truly find out where the Detroit Smash quintuple and rock scale against universe destroying gods and fiction controlling high schoolers. Thanks so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in the next one.